Hello, my name is Mitchell Hepburn and I am the developer of the Backrooms Mass Extinction. Today I would like to present to you my concept for a water desalination plant that I have put into the public domain so anybody is free to use it. Idea Overview Desalination Plant for the Public Domain by Mitchell Hepburn In this model, both sodium sulfate decahydrate and anhydrous sodium sulfate play crucial roles in a desalination process that involves a reversible hydration-dehydration cycle. From my research, I read that about 55.91% of sodium sulfate decahydrate is water. Usage of sodium sulfate decahydrate to release water through heating. Dehydration phase. The hydrated sodium sulfate decahydrate is heated to a temperature around 32.4 degrees Celsius, 90.3 degrees Fahrenheit, or above for a higher water release rate. This process causes the material to release the stored water molecules as vapor, leaving behind anhydrous sodium sulfate. Fresh water capture. The released water vapor, which is now desalinated and fresh, can be collected and condensed back into liquid form using a condensation system. This condensed water is the product of the desalination process. Repletion of anhydrous sodium sulfate to extract fresh water from salt water. Water absorption phase. Sodium sulfate decahydrate is exposed to humid air or directly to water vapor. It absorbs water molecules and converts to its hydrated form, storing the water within its crystal lattice. In this type of desalination plant, you would need some kind of enclosed area with controlled humidity which sprays seawater mist into the air in proximity to anhydrous sodium sulfate. Reusability. The anhydrous sodium sulfate can be reused in subsequent cycles. If the environment is humid or if water vapor is reintroduced, the anhydrous sodium sulfate can reabsorb water, transitioning back to the hydrated form. The hydrated form absorbs water vapor and the anhydrous form releases fresh water vapor upon heating. This approach leverages the reversible transformation between these two states to capture and release fresh water, potentially offering a more energy-efficient and environmentally friendly alternative to traditional desalination methods. However, practical implementation would require addressing challenges related to efficiency, material durability, <coughs> and scalability and my work would need to be checked for errors as it hasn't been peer-reviewed. Efficiency. The efficiency of the process, especially the rate of water absorption and release, would need to be carefully studied and optimized to ensure that the system can produce a meaningful volume of fresh water within a reasonable time frame. Material durability. The repeated hydration-dehydration cycles could potentially impact the durability and longevity of the sodium sulfate material. Over time, the material might degrade, affecting the overall efficiency and effectiveness of the process. Scalability. It's important to consider the scalability of this process. Will it be feasible to build and operate large-scale desalination plants using this method? Will the required infrastructure be cost-effective and practical? Practical implementation. Creating a controlled environment with the necessary humidity levels for the water absorption phase might be challenging. Maintaining these conditions consistently and without significant energy input could have challenges. Research and peer review. My work would need thorough research, validation, and peer review to confirm the viability of the proposed process. This would include addressing potential issues and fine-tuning the methodology.